Hey guys, thanks for watching the Chen Dynasty, it's Mike Chen. Now, bubble tea has enjoyed immense popularity in recent years. Bubble tea shops are popping up in different parts of the world, particularly in malls, on street corners, basically anywhere thirsty kids, teenagers, and even adults tend to flock. This unique and sweet tasting drink is recognizable to most of us because of the tapioca balls found at the bottom of the cup that contains it, and of course, the white straws to sip them with. But despite its popularity and all the people who claim to love it, let me ask you you guys something. How much do you really know about bubble tea? I mean, I'm just asking because I know most of you have said I love bubble tea at least once in your life. And since you really should know as much as you can about the person or thing you've said I love you to, here are some facts about bubble tea's history, ingredients, and health risks that you may not know. First off, did you know that bubble tea was invented at a really boring staff meeting in Taiwan? There is a lot of speculation about the origin of bubble tea, but it is generally agreed upon that it is a Taiwanese tea-based drink invented in Taichung back in the 1980s. As the story goes, Taiwanese tea stands became very popular in the 80s, and in order to set himself apart from the competition, one concession owner at the Chun Shui Tang Tea House in Taichung began to serve Chinese tea cold after getting inspired from the Japanese's iced coffee. A few years later, his project development manager Lin Sui Hui was really bored at a staff meeting when she decided to dump her Taiwanese dessert called Feng Yuan, a sweetened tapioca pudding, into her her iced tea. When she drank it, she realized how good it tasted, and right then and there, they decided to add it to their menu. Soon enough, it became the franchise's top-selling product, and other iced tea businesses in Taiwan began to imitate them. And so began the evolution of bubble tea as we know it today. Number two, the word bubble in bubble tea doesn't refer to the tapioca pearls. Most people assume that the name bubble tea refers to the round, bubble-like tapioca pearls found at the bottom of your cup, but it might surprise you that the bubble in bubble tea actually refers to the bubble foam that foams on top of the drink. These oxygen pockets are formed as a result of preparing the bubble tea by shaking its ingredients such as ice, milk, tea, and sugar in a cocktail shaker. I wonder if anybody ever walked into a bubble tea shop and said, I want a bubble tea. Shaken, not stirred. And this is why bubble tea is the perfect drink for James Bond. Can you imagine James Bond walking into a bubble tea shop? Yes, bubble tea. Shaken, not stirred. Okay, that's just the worst English accent ever. I'm sorry. Number three, bubble tea goes by many names. While bubble tea is the more popular name for this beverage, it is also referred to as milk tea, pearl tea, tapioca tea, boba tea, boba nai cha, foam milk tea, mummy milk tea, and q or qq, which means chewy in Chinese. The name choice used by shops usually depend on the variations of the ingredients contained in the beverage they sell, and also their geographic location. For example, in New York, we call it bubble tea, but I know on the west coast, they call it boba. Number Four, tapioca balls come from tapioca, a starch extracted from the cassava root, which is used as a thickening agent in a variety of foods. Cassava is a nutty flavored root vegetable native to South America, and it is also a major food staple in developing countries. It contains nearly twice the calories of potatoes, making it a large source of energy primarily because of its carbs and sugar content. But while it has a lot of calorie, it completely lacks any nutrients, and even worse, cassava can poison you when eating raw. Due to its levels of cyanide, the tapioca starch has to be detoxified before it can be consumed. If ingested raw, the toxicity in cassava can cause headaches, nausea, vomiting, paralysis, and even death. Number five, the size of the tapioca balls has evolved over the years. Now, veteran bubble tea drinkers all know that the size of the tapioca bubbles in the bubble tea can vary. When bubble tea was first introduced in the 1980s, the beverage contained smaller tapioca pearls, which was typically used in desserts during that time. Later, on, bubble tea shops started to sell the drink containing larger tapioca balls or boba. Today, the larger boba is the more widely preferred ingredient in making this popular drink. Next, bubble tea comes in many flavors and customizable varieties. Making bubble tea has gone a long way since it gained popularity in different parts of the world. People are no longer limited to drinking the traditional style of this beverage, as now it can be customized in a variety of ways in terms of temperature, type of milk and tea, and flavor choices. While bubble tea is typically served cold, it is also available in hot varieties, which is perfect during the winter. But if you like it cold and you also like it to be a little bit thicker, bubble tea can also be served as a smoothie. Shops also offer a lot of options when it comes to the type of tea the bubble tea is made of, such as green, black, oolong, and even Thai and chai tea. And though bubble tea is referred to as milk tea in some parts of the world, it can also be served with non-dairy alternatives like almond milk, soy milk, and coconut milk. This beverage also comes in a variety of flavors 
flavors, anything between fruity flavors like mango and apple and neutral flavors like chocolate and caramel. Number seven, and this probably comes as no surprise, bubble tea isn't very healthy. While the basic ingredients of milk tea can be healthy on their own, the beverage isn't exactly low calorie or fat free. Bubble tea is loaded with empty calories because tapioca starch is all carbohydrates that has no nutritional value. Depending on the milk use, it could also be very fattening. And then you add the sugary flavored syrup on top of these ingredients and this drink can easily contain three to 400 calories with more than 50 grams of carbs. But you know what? It tastes so good. Just drink it anyway. Number eight, still bad news. Drinking bubble tea increases the risk of obesity. According to a 2016 study, the high amounts of sugar and fat in this beverage pose public health concerns since they can potentially exacerbate the epidemic that is childhood obesity. Drinking fluids is of course less satisfying than consuming solid foods. And because of this, we tend to drink more before we feel full. And so we end up drinking a lot of sugary stuff that aren't exactly good for us in large quantities, which in the long run can lead to a number of health issues. This study also suggests that nutritional education should also give special attention to milk tea as a sugar sweetened beverage and public health initiatives have also been urged to focus some of its efforts towards promoting the moderate consumption of drinks like bubble tea. I mean, I hear you. I only drink bubble tea after I had an all you can eat hot pot. So that's only like five times a week. Number nine, and I hate telling you guys this, but bubble tea consumption is tied to ADHD. It has been warned that attention should be paid to drinking bubble tea, not just because of excess sugar consumption, but also because of its potential association with mental health problems, particularly among school aged children. There is evidence that consumption of sugar sweetened beverages like milk tea is adversely associated with childhood attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Moderate consumption of bubble tea is not likely to increase the risk of ADHD, but like any other sugary treat, it is something you may not want your kids to consume on a daily basis. So yeah, don't, don't learn from me. And finally, I'm so sorry to be telling you guys this, there are claims that bubble tea can be toxic. German researchers have reportedly found the traces of carcinogenic chemicals in tapioca ball samples, such as styrene, acetophenol, and brominated substances that should not be in foods at all. These chemicals have been shown to cause cancer and a variety of adverse effects on our immune, reproductive, nervous, and endocrine systems. But in defense of the beverage, Taiwan's Food and Drug Administration confirmed that a second round of tests conducted by German authorities detected no cancer-causing chemicals in bubble tea. So I guess you can decide who you want to trust. And I'm going to defend bubble tea for a minute here. While it's not exactly a health food, bubble tea is a delicious treat that's not particularly dangerous to drink. If you want something sweet, chewy, as well as thirst quenching, that's not an orange. And come on, bubble tea is no worse for you than many other desserts that you eat or sweet drinks that you have from time to time. And you can now customize your bubble tea to make it less unhealthy. So just to remember, 30% sugar and always less ice. That's where they get you. And another tip from me, try not going to uh, bubble tea places where they make the milk tea from powder. Try to actually go to a shop where they actually make you tea and then pour real milk into it. That's gonna taste much better and be much healthier for you. I still remember the first time I've ever tasted bubble tea. I was in Chicago, I was in a Chinese restaurant and I was with my Taiwanese friend and she asked me if I wanted a bubble tea. I said, what's a bubble tea? Guys, after that, my life was never the same again. All right, hopefully you enjoyed this video and learned something new about bubble tea. Also, let me know in the comments below, what do you call it? Do you call it bubble tea? Do you call it milk tea? Do you call it boba? Do you call it QQ? And let me know what's your favorite flavor and combination. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you later.